Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, we're still here on Floor 2, yes, in Act 1 of the first campaign in Hammerwatch, trying to get all the secrets and all planks, just to show you good people how to not fail like Dan and I did. Oh my gosh, at the end of the first playthrough. Playing with Dan was the first time I'd played the game, and uh, so I obviously did not know where all the secrets are. Some of them are really, really, really well hidden and borderline obnoxious. But I, <laughs> it's weird to say, because like once you know where they are, it seems fine and a little bit obvious, especially once you kind of like know what you're looking for. Um, even if you don't know where all the secrets are, but you kind of know how to look for the secrets in the game, it becomes much easier to find them. I'm not sure if that's like unreasonably obvious. Like that's just a throwaway statement because it's just so... Well, duh. But I, don't know, I think going completely blind into this game... Um, like we did on our first playthrough, we had absolutely no hope whatsoever of finding all the planks and everything. Unless we just spent just inordinate amounts of time hunting for it, like to the point it'd be like, you know, 15 hours or whatever um, for our first playthrough instead of you know, seven. And I mean, ooh, on our first playthrough, like, we didn't even know that there were secrets, like breakable walls and stuff, and like walkthroughable walls. Like I kind of had that in mind because I love Super Metroid so much, and that's kind of like the method for secret hunting in that game is some walls you can walk through and some walls you can break down. So I was like, if it's like that, and it just happens that it was, but I didn't know if that was the case. I mean, so being like to that high of a degree unsure what you're even looking for, I think would make it pretty much impossible to find all the secrets. But if you like had a little bit of background knowledge and you're like, yeah, I need to look for places I can walk through walls and look for places I can break down walls, you might be okay. Especially once you found one of those things. And it kind of if you just have like the background knowledge, like there's one really big secret on each level. Or even if somebody said there's like one plank on each level you need to find, then you can keep track and you're like, okay, I'm either on track or not. So I don't know, I think there's just some little things about this game that you kinda need to know before you can be I think I'm just going to go with dagger damage. Um, can't afford poison, and I'm not too upset about it. I probably won't come back for it either. Um, I don't, because I'm pretty sure the poisoning is randomized as well. It does seem like I'm dealing a little bit of splash damage, or quite a bit of splash damage. Or like to huge groups, the guy I'm directly hitting takes 19, or I guess 14, then I get I get these um, combos that increases the damage, but then all the splash damage is like 5 to everybody else. I might hit like maybe 2 guys for 14 damage or so, but definitely nothing significant. It's not like with the Paladin where you hit, you know, every single person in front of you and to the side of you and slightly behind you, like 60 damage at a time. Guess we can just whoa run through here and clear out the area a little bit, and then go back and do some secret hunting. I find that's usually a pretty good approach. Just like if you have a massive combo chain going, just like run through and kill everybody while you're fast and powerful, and then you can come back in a second and like pick up all the gold, break all the pots, which gets a little bit tedious. Honestly, I don't super like breaking all the pots, but it's probably the best source of gold in the game, or at least. Yeah, I'd say the majority of the gold comes from breaking the pots. Or maybe not the majority, but a vast, vast portion of it. And uh, even then, I don't think you can afford... Like, if I've done it where I've broken, like, every single pot and gone and found every single bonus area and all that stuff, and I still don't think you can afford every single power-up. Maybe you can if you never buy anything extra, like if you never buy potions and you never buy extra lives, then maybe. I can't confirm or deny, but it seems unlikely. So you kind of do have to, to some degree, choose what power-ups you want, but like only slightly. Um, I guess you kind of need to figure out like if combo is going to be super important for you or not, and like what parts of the combo. Like for me, I with the Warlock, whose abilities kind of naturally given back health. I really don't plan on spending hardly any gold on the um, 
like regenerating health portions of the combo. But I'll probably focus on Nova for sure. I'll probably max out, and then I think I'll get the timer up a bit. I don't think it's necessary to max the timer, especially again with the Warlock, how quickly he can kill tons and tons of people. Uh, I don't really think you need the maximum timer. I guess if you wanted to have combo going constantly, um, a person you'd want to get upgraded timer on is probably the Ranger, or maybe the Priest. I don't really know about the Paladin. The Paladin kind of becomes Warlock-esque towards the end of the game. Um, his final ability and the Warlock's final ability kind of work similarly in a lot of ways. Beetle spawn plant. I suppose you could actually get all the power-ups for everybody. You could just find an area where there's like a bunch of spawners and then just never take out the spawners and kill like 20,000 enemies, probably more, and get infinite gold because every now and again they'll drop like three gold, but that'd be so tedious. Okay, yeah, so stepping on those four little glyphs on the ground or whatever, um, open up, get a vendor coin. Actually, I think that vendor coin is sometimes a random upgrade as well. I guess vendor coins, I'll just start considering them upgrades. Um, like an upgrade to your bartering skills, I suppose. But yeah, so you get an upgrade and some money. Pretty sure you always get the money. Like, you can never get two upgrades. I think. Don't don't take my word for that 100%. But I'm pretty sure I've never got two upgrades there. And I've done it like six times. just burn through all my mana. I was like, oh, might as well. I accidentally clicked that button on the wall, didn't even see it there, but I think it just opens up a shortcut. Oh, okay, this goes back to the uh, Vitality Vendor. If you open up both shortcuts, or if you hit both those buttons, and you can come back through here and go down to the level 1 Vitality Person, which they only offer mana and health upgrades. Later, the Vitality Person offers, like, speed upgrades and stuff, and is one of my favorite vendors. Um, right off the bat, they're not, they're not make or break. It's not like the end of the world. Get to that vendor, I suppose. I don't know, it can be. It's, I guess I got double mana, which is super useful. But that's pretty much it. It's just like, okay, cool, there's that vendor. I'm not like losing my mind. Like later on, I'm like, yes, speed upgrades. Okay, the Warlock definitely struggles with large crowds if you don't have mana. Especially large crowds of these slugs. And if you have mana, then you can clear them out like nobody's business, apparently. Gosh dang. I take back everything I said. <laughs> the mana vendor is super useful. Definitely freak out and go there. No, I don't know. Um, I guess like the mage and the paladin... Ranger, eh, medium, borderline the thief, but sort of not the thief. Don't really struggle with large groups, even, like, at ever. I don't think the mage ever really needs mana to be able to deal with it well, and neither does the paladin, especially for um, melee people. But large groups of ranged units, like, his shield is so useful just for blocking all projectiles. Well, not all projectiles, it can't block, like, totem magic or some type of special lich magic. Um, but stuff like arrows and these little globul globules, it totally blocks. So, like, you can just stand in front of a huge group of slugs all day and you won't take any damage at all as a paladin. So, huge groups of them never really become a problem as long as you can keep them all in front of you and you'll just block everything. The warlock is kind of like hit and run. You, like, slap them twice and they're like, oh, I can get out of the way. But the Warlock has fairly decent health to make up for it. Oh, so here's another secret. Um, break down this wall. That puts in a chest. And then you break down this wall. And that opens the way. But I guess out of the two, this one's more useful because it actually allows you to get the plank, but there's no reason not to hit both of them. 
Nice. Early on, those guys are hard to deal with with melee, um, just because you have to like time your movements really well. But as you get more uh, movement speed upgrades from the vendor, kind of like if you hold attack while moving, um, in that little period of time where you like twitch forward, you move actually fast enough, you can kind of dodge the ground spikes. So you just kind of walk up to them and sort of strafe to the side, just kind of go, eh, and you'll hit them to death. So for now, they're super difficult. Later, they get more manageable. That's pretty much the case for all enemies, though. Well, I don't know. The enemies get more difficult as you get more powerful, but I would say if you're breaking all the boxes to get all to get all the gold and you buy as many upgrades as you can, you probably get better faster than the enemies, so the game does become easier until Act 4, I suppose, when things get massively overwhelming. There's also kind of like a turning point in all the acts, where when you first show up, it's pretty difficult, and then once you get to, like, a couple of the combat vendors, uh, things really shift in your favor if you've been collecting the money. Just because you get, like, the upgrades that are available to you become so powerful. Oops, that's terrible. Oh, now I'm slow! So much goo! I have not been doing a good job of paying attention to my mana. Um, I feel like with the Warlock, you're either super handicapped or like super overpowered depending on how much mana you have. Like if I'm going into a huge fight and I have like 75 mana, it's pretty much just like, oh, okay, I instantly win with no trouble. And if I have no mana, it's like, well, this is going to be quite the struggle. And so I think one thing that's important to do with this guy at least is kind of like check before you go in to see how much mana you have and then you can decide if you should go in super hard or not. Like right now, I could probably attract all these beetles and then just like destroy them all. Oh gosh, I've done exactly that. Yeah, see. <laughs> Especially once you kill enough to get a combo because then your chain lightning just wreaks havoc. Another good tip is strafing backwards with melee characters. Like if this guy hits me, he'll do so much damage. But if I kind of like stay close but keep strafing backwards, as long as I'm not standing still or like very nearly standing still, he can't really hit me. Um, which means I can just do insane amounts of damage on him. Compared to like the mage or um, the ranger or definitely the priest, if you're just right up in somebody's face with any of the melee characters, you'll deal crazy amounts of damage like, super fast. So that's, um, oh my, oh my. <laughs> that's one of the reasons why strafing is super useful, I guess. Um, with melee characters because it allows you to just stay like right on that border where the enemies are right in front of you but they can't actually hit you and then just decimate everything. Um, I didn't know about strafing for a long time when I was first playing and uh, it's so helpful. So definitely, definitely like figure it out and get used to using it I would say. Alright to get that uh, extra life you just have to go over here there's a secret wall, and then there's a the little secret combination. I'm pretty sure the combination is randomized every time. Um, if you're playing the game with sound on, you just have to... Yeah, if you hear that little sound, then that means you messed up. Uh, if you don't have sound on, pretty much just hit the button and then run away, because um, by the time... Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> just started stepping on buttons. By the time the bombs start falling, um, you don't really have time to get out if you didn't hear the little prompt. Sometimes when I was playing this game, I like to just put on some nice music in the background and then turn off the game sound. And uh, I got blown up several times in rooms similar to that. Secret, like, four switch sequences that drop bombs on you if you get it wrong uh, are fairly common as, like, a secret area. And they usually just trigger something. Sometimes they, they do different things every time. Sometimes they like will open a bridge. Sometimes they'll like just make some walls disappear. Sometimes they'll just move an item like that. So they're pretty common. I don't think there's anything I need from the Nova Lady right now, or Combo Lady. And I want to save my money for... I'm not sure what... I guess Defense Vendor is up next. I don't really know what stuff is available for the Warlock for Defense. 
but whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be more useful than combo. That's definitely another recommendation. Um, probably do everything you can to kill the spawners before you start attacking the enemies that much, unless you have an ability that just kills tons of enemies all at once uh, really quickly. Oh, there's a secret button right there, and it opens up a secret rejuvenation shop. How about that? Um, like I think in one or two of those circumstances, I ran up and there was like a huge clump of those lower level maggot dudes, and just shoot. I mean, for the Warlock, you have Chain Lightning, which works wonders. And then I guess for, I don't know, other characters might have other useful options for killing large groups of people. Uh, but for the most part, you just want to run to the spawner and take that out. As long as you're not going to get completely destroyed in the process. Like, if I run to the spawner, I'll probably get surrounded by beetles. Destroyed. <laughs> Notice now, as I do it, and it's happening. Oh, oh my gosh, get out of here. Alrighty, then the next secret is behind these pots. There's a breakdownable wall, and then a little button. Back in there, you just walk against the back wall, and it opens up that area with the uh, vendor coin and all that. And now the next fun part is getting to it, because there's 20 million beetles in here in one of the ground-stabbing tentacle plants. As well as 40 million beetle spawners! But, oh my gosh, if I have Nova and as much mana as I did... Or combo, and as much mana as I did, then my chain lightning does insane damage, which means like much bigger return on my investment of mana. And it was already a pretty big return in the first place, so that's kind of why I just sprinted in there because you just shoot off a thousand chain lightnings and pretty much destroy everything because I had combo going. So there's like there's kind of ways you can turn a bad situation into a good one, like it up room full of enemies and a ground stabber doesn't really seem like the best thing at first, but if you kind of rope up all the enemies together into a big clump, that usually allows you to kind of turn it in your favor. Having a ton of enemies in front of you is pretty much always a good thing. Um, having a ton of enemies around you is always a bad thing. Just kind of as a rule for this game. That's another way strafing is good, because you can just kind of move constantly in a direction, which will cause all the enemies to sort of line up, while also dealing damage to them. Um, I don't know, strafing is just great. It's just great for everybody. Okay, yes, this is for floor three of Act 1. Each act, there are four acts, has three levels and then a boss fight. And the boss fights don't count as a floor, so like the highest floor in the game is floor 12, but it's actually, and I guess there's technically a floor 16 if you just count the number of floors right after it. Um, so I guess, I don't really know what that means for everybody. I think I missed a key somewhere. Because I should be able to open that other gate as well. Oh gosh, I'm not paying attention to where the bullets are at. How much health does this guy have? Goodness gracious.
I don't really know how Chain Lightning chooses its targets. Like, it skipped over a dude right next to it and hit a guy behind it. Hm. Don't ask me. I'm not the expert. Talk to Dan about it. He knows what's going down. Don't shoot me, no! At least these guys are shooting... up. Oh, one of them's dead. Right. I'm going to say, at least they're shooting about at the same time, because pretty much the technique is just dodge the bullet, go and hit him twice, dodge the bullet, go and hit him twice. So if they're shooting, like, one shoots, and then, like, halfway through his cooldown or whatever, the other guy shoots, that would basically set me up for machine gun vomit, which everyone knows is a nightmare. If you've ever been in front of machine gun vomit, or been, a, been the person machine gun vomiting, I'm pretty sure no one was having fun. Okay, so we got that last bronze key, so I think I'm just going to run back and open up that door, and then that'll be it for this video. I guess we've only seen a couple of the secrets on floor 3 so far. Um, I'm trying to remember where the plank is on this level. But I guess the third floor of each act also always has the bonus stage, so we'll get to, get to that in the next video. And um, I'll probably remember where that plank is, and whoa! Go get it done. So, but until then, everybody, keep it trashy.